Boeing does a little bit better job of this than I do, but. <laughs> they don't use hot glue. <laughs> Epoxy, right? <laughs> so the servos just let us move all our control surfaces. All right, then autopilot systems. So I mentioned that there's a whole range of autopilot systems. Uh, some of my favorites, though, are the microcontroller based. Um, systems like the Ardu Pilot Mega Board you see right there. It's actually sold by SparkFun.com for 50 or 60 bucks right now. It doesn't include all the pins and once you add um, some of the other sensors that you need it comes out to about $200. But that very small board right there is literally all you need. It's just a modified uh, Arduino Mega. Um, the Paparazzi project I'm a serious fan of because all, this, all the source code, uh, much like the Ardu Pilot uh, project is completely open source, but they've been around a little bit longer, so I feel like their sources, um, it's better developed, it's far better commented, and uh, the paparazzi will work on a uh, Linux operating system, which I'm a fan of, because anytime you can make the plane run on Linux, I mean, that's, take it for what Unleash it's worth. Unleash the flying penguins. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Penguins do fly, I promise. So um, future work, uh, the Beagle board in the bottom right is a $150 Pentium 3 equivalent computer that fits in your hand. This is one right here. It's just a single board uh, computer. Um, runs any Linux distribution that uh, you flash to an SD card. And it has, uh, I think it runs at 750 something megahertz. So it's got plenty of processing power. USB connectivity. Um, it's beautiful. So future work is uh, taking the Beagle board and maybe developing uh, our own autopilot framework right on it, um, just because we can. Telemetry. So it's really nice now that we have the, the plane is actually flying, it's stabilized. Um, we have the autopilot that's uh, given it some intelligence. It can you know, fly waypoints and whatnot with the hardware that we just saw. But what if we actually want to interact with it? We want to see what it's doing. We want to see its current airspeed, altitude, next waypoint. Maybe we want to push data to it. You know. Re, uh, reroute its flight plan, et cetera. So we need a way to communicate with it. XBs and Zigbees have been on the market now for uh, a couple years. They're a uh, 802.14.5 system and they, they work beautifully. They're essentially a wireless serial link. They're very easy to program with uh, Digi's uh, XCTU program. And uh, with the 900 megahertz uh, EXE, um, modems, you can get out to uh, the 12, maybe 15 mile range uh, depending on your antenna uh, setup and, and whatnot. And line of sight, a few other things. Yeah, line of sight is usually helpful, but um, uh, the, with the RPSMA connectors on the end, uh, we can essentially plug any antenna that we like in this. So we can really beam traffic out uh, pretty far. Uh, so we know that we can touch it, and uh, in many cases we can, we can reach back pretty reliably. Um, Cellular is actually really becoming popular in the, the DIY drones community because it's a higher bandwidth, easier way to network your UAV up in the air. So say we put our Beagle board on the plane, we just plug in one of these, you know, uh, relatively inexpensive USB uh, cellular devices, you know, pick your vendor, Verizon, T-Mobile, AT&T, and now we have our Beagle board on, you know, the internet. Now, I'm sure you guys can imagine uh, what we can do with that, but if we have a plane flying in the air and it's networked, then uh, we have unlimited range as long as we're within the, cell, uh, within the cell network. And hey, now I can play with this across a planet too. I don't necessarily have to be in the same state. So, so that's, uh, that's pretty easy. Uh, the video feed. Um, unfortunately, uh, our video feed was a, a little shoddy. That's because I was using my $30 camera and not my actually better $18 camera. But <laughs> in the upper left hand corner you see a board camera. These are really inexpensive CCD uh, uh, board cameras. Uh, they're, they're awesome. I mean they see, they see near IR. You saw a night flight. That's not some night vision system. That is a board camera. I mean no joke, 30 bucks. It, it doesn't get better than that really. So, uh, Not without a whole lot more money. Yeah. Now, you give me a lot of money, I'm sure we could do better, oh, yeah. but yeah. Um, but then, uh, you know, there's a whole selection of transmitters out there. If you have your ham radio license, then um, you have more band privileges and there's all kinds of stuff you can do. I, uh, I've got a ham radio license. I encourage many of you to get it as well, for no other reason than because you get the, uh, the bandwidth, oh, I'm sorry, the band privileges. But uh, using the ham radio bands, we can push uh, video feed out pretty much as as far as we can go. You can, uh, you have a lot of band privileges and 
you can roll your own system. So what I'd like to learn to do sometime soon is uh, I want to roll my own uh, 434 megahertz uh, video system and see just how far I can push out a, uh, a reliable video feed. Because as you saw, it kind of gets a little bit fuzzy. Right now on the ground, we're using a directional antenna. It's spotty, to be honest. GPS. So uh, the, uh, the plane, obviously knowing its current location, that's kind of an important feature. Um, many of our phones now have GPS receivers, so you can only imagine how, uh, how small they are. What you see here are actually really high-end um, GPS devices that literally fit in the palm of your hand. They, they're about the size of a quarter each. Um, a 10 hertz refresh rate uh, down to, uh, on average, two to three meter resolution uh, GPS receiver is only going to cost you about 80 bucks, so that's freaking awesome. Um, in airframe. All right, so now we have all these devices. We can get our plane up in the air. So, so what do we put them in? Well, I recommend a foam model. Go out there, go online, and uh, and find a foam uh, model airplane, and you know, modify it. Um, yeah, it makes a really good iPhone case. It does. It <laughs> it will protect the iPhone. No promise. At least from 400 feet. Brenda, do you want to talk about some of the benefits of foam? Um, definitely. The having seen this thing. Uh, in action for the first time last night, um, I've seen all sorts of videos and pictures and stuff. Um, it's light, it's cheap, damn near disposable. So, you know, we plowed this thing into a, an RV park, into the parking lot, and At 25 miles an hour. Yeah, 25 miles an hour, and yeah, it's pretty trashed. But a bit of glue, some tape, you can put it back together. But also, for the most part, if you plan your uh, installation of all the electronics correctly. Uh, or sanely, you could basically, okay, airframe's trashed, you know, another 80, 100 bucks, get another one, just transplant everything, and you're good to go again. So you could afford to be a little bit stupid with the thing. You know, it's going to cost you a little bit, but not, you know, the, the $20,000 that some of the, the real professionals I'd say stuff. double sided tape cost us about 100 bucks last night, didn't it? About, uh, well, what's your time worth, too? You got to include that. Not much, so <laughs> it's all right. <laughs> Uh, so uh, some, some community proven airframes. Um, if you guys go online, there's a, a large DIY UAV community. It's uh, um, at DIYdrones.com and also rcgroups.com. There's a really active, uh, you know, make it yourself UAV community there. Um, a lot of people have agreed that these two airframes here, the Easy Star on the left and this uh, unknown manufacturer, uh, Skywalker, on the right, are some awesome airframes. Last night we were flying with the, uh, the Skywalker. This thing's 100 bucks. You kind of buy it on eBay or through some, some uh, shady reseller, and it, it comes from China in a nice little crumpled box. But it's all good. I mean, it works. And, um, and the models, um, they, they carry a lot of weight. Um, again, they, they weigh nothing. They're practically disposable. So as long as you can retrieve it at the end of the day and pull your electronics out, you can be up and flying again in a couple hours. And actually, one of the best things about foam is that we can repair these. Say, literally, the wing snaps in half. I think we have some videos of it should have happened had it not yeah. been a foam model. Um, but you just take some Gorilla Glue you know, that you get from Home Depot and some water, and you let the foam, uh, I'm sorry, let the uh, glue foam up a little bit, and then adhere that foam together. And the, uh, the glue connection is stronger than the foam itself. So from any amount of damage, and I'm speaking from personal experience, you can glue and tape an airplane back together and somehow get it up in the sky. So let's, uh, let's show a real quick build log of uh, what I do when I get my new Easy Star. So I get the Easy Star, I pull it out of the box, and this is the, uh, this is the you know, foam fuselage that I see. It splits in half just like this, and you can see all the uh, interior space and whatnot. I uh, upgrade the, the motor. I don't use any of the stock components. This is a, uh, um, this is a brushless um, uh, motor that runs at about 14,000 RPM uh, at normal voltage. Um, it's been in a 7-inch prop um, and actually provides an enormous amount of thrust, so much that even when the plane is, is fully loaded, we can accelerate almost vertically. Um, and uh, also in the in the bottom there, you you see this uh, that device that says 36. That's a an ESC or an electronic speed controller. That essentially is what our uh, battery plugs into, and essentially is like a throttle for our motor. It also provides power to the receiver and to our other electronics on the uh, on the plane. So I, I make some incisions and kind of route this through, and you know a lot of hot glue to kind of keep everything put um, in there. And uh, then I throw the receiver in, which is that other box that you see. Start connecting up the wires. 
I didn't show, there's an outside photo. Um, the servos literally slide in the side and uh, we connect the push rods and everything that control the servo arms to the control surfaces. And at that point, uh, we're pretty much ready to go. We just have to drop a payload in. So we do that. Payload, bingo, camera, pan tilt mount, under wing, so it won't uh, get ripped off when it crash. And we're finished. I mean, too easy. And you see that black box on top? That time, it was hot glued on. <laughs> and that suspicious looking antenna out the front, that is the video transmitter, but I mean, who knows what it really could be, so. All right, movie time. Run to Let's, uh, let's uh, show some movies. Show one, of the, show one of the more successful ones. One of the more successful ones? Okay. So this is over somewhere in Southern California. Uh, just ignore those lights that you see in the sky. That's not air traffic or anything. And so when we have the plane stabilized, the, and the autopilot turned on, it just gives it rudimentary, um, you know, left and right control basically. The stabilization system just keeps it flat level and we just kind of fly a route. The camera you see pan, panning and tilting according to the ground user, he's wearing a gyroscope attached to a, a helmet or a hat and he's wearing video goggles. So it's like he's sitting in the plane. It's a really cool sensation. It's made a couple people sick. It's made a couple people fall over. I got thrown up on once. <laughs> And uh, basically, wherever you look, it's like you're sitting in this little foam plane, and you know the, the camera looks, and, and you're there. Yeah, just so. little dots in the sky. Stars. Yeah, that's it. Moving, moving stars. Stars in, in line. Nice sequential line. <laughs> so this is uh, this is Southern California from the uh, from the sky at night. And again, remember, this is just a thirty dollar board camera. The CCD lenses or the CCs, CCD imagers actually see near IR. So especially when there's all this uh, light pollution, you know, from street lights and buildings lit up. I mean, we can we can see very nicely in the dark. Yeah, that's you guys down there, I think. Yeah, I think we're trying to wave at some point. Yeah, you, know, you can see the vehicle, you can see those people. That's a pretty decent amount of... Uh, Let's fast forward a little. Yeah. Oh, coming in for landing. Actually, I wonder, is this our interesting movie? Yes, so yeah. okay. We thought it'd be really cool if we like, We thought it'd be really cool if we flew between some buildings. <laughs> you see the trees in the courtyard and, and then my friend's like, hey look, a traffic cone. <laughs> <laughs> so we decided, you know, we we're gonna bring it back. We were actually having problems uh, initially with our uh, electronic speed controller was overheating and it, it happens to just cut the motor out at some point, which is not really behavior that we want to see when we're up in the air and well, we don't have any idea it's happening. Yeah. So we decided, you know, we'd kind of bring it back. Render, can you point out that building in the bottom bottom right? Yeah, the, the, this building here. That building right there, yeah. yeah. Okay, um, we'll talk about that in just a second. <laughs> yep. Wait for it. Wait for it. I'm, I'm actually going to turn the sound on so we can hear something uh, kind of unique here. No motor. <laughs> and back again. That, ladies and gentlemen, is the sound of UAV death. <laughs> <laughs> so that. <laughs> So that building that we saw there, that was the LA Clippers uh, main office and training facility. <laughs> now my friends and I, you know, we get in the car, we go drive over there, we're like, all right, we, we think the plane's around here somewhere. So we, it's still transmitting video at this point. We have no way to remotely turn it off. So, you know, we get out of the car, we got this giant patch antenna and we're doing this the whole time. <laughs> I think it's over here, man. Nope, right. <laughs> So anyways, we walk around this building, back and forth, back and forth. At some point, one of my friends is like, dude, it's on the building. No. It's not on the building. Okay, well, let's get on the building. So, so we go over to, you know, to the front door, and it's, it's actually got some pretty impressive security. We noticed as we walked around, there's about five cameras on every side. We were like, hmm. Did you get, like, 
well, who, who, uh, who works here, you know? So we walk to the front door and we're like, oh shoot, LA Clippers. 